Would it be a legitimate baptism? It's attached to the word God's word. Yes. Yeah. There's water in it. That's exactly what I do. I would use sand. I like the idea of sand. Yeah, but sand isn't water. But so, you should also make the point, Bill, that you could just wait until you get to somewhere where there's water. No, but they're about to die. die. So? <laughs> so go to heaven if you believe in Jesus. I'd baptize them with the water in my spit. Why not? Give them that promise. I love that. Jesus spit in the dirt and made blood and paid on somebody's eyes. I mean, I can see that. Uh, There's people that believe in, they, they claim that they believe in God before they're baptized and still go to heaven. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. But why not give them the blessing of baptism? <laughs> you wouldn't? I don't know if I would. Well, it's gross, but it's still water. <laughs> yeah, but our Lutheran church says, in case of emergency, the pastor can baptize, or anyone can. But scripture also says, you can go to heaven without being baptized. Right. But scripture also says there's a blessing in baptism, so give them the blessing in baptism. Yeah. I don't know who I'm coming from. They just got that last minute. <laughs> what? What? She was talking about using urine. Maybe not. I'm, not I'm, I'm exaggerating to make a point, aren't I? You know, I, uh, yeah. Your blood has water in it. They're asking for it. I don't remember. Yeah, I would definitely do it. I would definitely do it. And let's say they got rescued. That person died. Yeah. Okay. You good? That's why the sand makes more sense. But sand is not water. Alright, so we're all sitting here walking up on the water. Alright, let's continue. Who is the Jews Holy Baptism? Jesus did. We already talked about that. Number 300. to baptize, or our, our responsibility is the sacraments and the word of God. Um, but if there's an emergency, anybody can do it. You can do it. Right? Uh, um, I'll, I'll never forget, one day I, was, I came into work and I uh, got a phone call. It was early, it was in the morning when I first came in. The phone call, uh, there's a family whose baby died. And they asked me to do the funeral. And I said I would. And I heard the story of what happened. It was a, a girl that was born, and she was born with all her organs 
uh, up here. And then they had, they performed emergency surgery to try to put everything in its right place, but it was too much for the baby. And so the nurse told the mom, uh, your baby's not going to make it. And she handed the baby back to mom, and this was a Christian nurse. And so she said, would you like to get your baby baptized? And then the mom said, yes. And so he, she goes to call the chaplain, and the chaplain wasn't around. So what did that nurse do? Very faithful nurse, she said, because she got yes, she took water and she baptized the child. And I was told that the child died about 20 minutes later. Uh, and so do you think I used that in the sermon when I did the funeral? Absolutely. Absolutely. That uh, was a faithful Christian woman who baptized that child. And that was just as much a baptism as kind of I were to do it or anything. Uh, all right. Where's the next one? Uh, okay, number 302. Go ahead. Where, you want to do that one? Well, you go ahead and do it. You were next, and then we'll come over. Thanks for offering, though. This is great. This is a good class. You should have a whole team. Yeah. <coughs> Why we baptize babies, and what might be the, uh, the argument against baptizing babies? They don't know what's going on, right? The Mark, Mark says that, that all children should be baptized because they're innocent. Because they're what? Innocent. Well, they're not innocent. That's the reason why they need to be baptized. But. Yeah, you're thinking about uh, when when they're doing the baptism, they started turning the kids away. Yes, I'm going to get to that. Yep, absolutely. That's in Mark and it's in Luke. Yes. And it was that you're as, ahead an, of example, as mm -hmm. an example, um, the disciples went into homes and when they baptized, they baptized everyone. They did do that, didn't they? Yeah. 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 And that's in the book of Acts. They baptized the entire household. True. But we, we, that's good. Those are good answers. Uh, but let's, we have to back up, and yeah, you're getting to that to the point. And, and, and so uh, there, there is, there are Christians who what reject infant baptism. If I were to join the Baptist Church, and I was baptized when I was an infant, if I were to bat, if I were to, to join the Baptist Church, what would they make me do? Stand up in front of the congregation. That's part of it, but they would absolutely make me get baptized again yeah. because yes, because they don't even acknowledge an infant baptism as a real baptism. So that exists within the Christian community, so we have to answer the question, right? Because either they're right or we are, right? Make sense? So what does the Bible I was, say about it? I was even told that it was um, Lutherans got it wrong, and that our baptism is from Satan. It involves Satan because we have a strong Right. I was told that. Okay. Yeah. There's strong feelings about this because uh, there's there's strong feelings about baptism all the way around. We have yeah, very strong feelings about baptism. So, uh, so we have to really talk about this. is very important for us to to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is the confusion too where people think they have to choose to be baptized, or suppose yeah. it's a gift? So yeah, we need exactly. to take the gift. Guys, this is good. you guys are a good class. Thanks. I really appreciate all those answers because you're all hitting parts of it, right? So, but but the the, the if you are going to uh, argue something or or defend something, you better know what it is that people believe. Because they're just as sincere as you are, aren't they? They're just as sincere. Um, and so but they're trying to figure the whole thing out, too. We would suggest it's wrong, and here's the reason. So let's talk about it, and let's see what the Word of God says. That's important, right? All right? And this does come down to decision theology and everything else. So let's, but uh, uh, for the person who rejects infant baptism, uh, it makes logical sense in one way, doesn't it? Because you're right. When you were if you were, if you were baptized as an infant, and we baptize adults too, right? I baptized a ninety-some odd year old 
died before he died. So he baptized at whatever age, right? Uh, but it, it, the, the logic goes like this. I think you said that, right? Who said the, uh, they don't know what's going on, right? If the child, if it's an infant, I don't remember my baptism, because I was an infant. So why would you baptize that child if that, bat, that child isn't expressing a faith or hasn't accepted Jesus as their savior and doesn't know what's going on? In other words, therefore, faith is attached to what? Some kind of human what? Intellect and reason. That's what they're saying. So the logic goes like this. Until the child is able to understand baptism and what it means and understand the gospel, uh, you shouldn't baptize that child. Once the person comes to, and this is the kind of language they'll use, you've probably heard the word age of accountability. All right? Once they come to an age of accountability, then they can reason this stuff, and then they can confess it, and then they should be baptized. That's lot. That sounds logical, doesn't it? Except, what is that human reasoning, or is that what the scriptures say in regards to what faith is? What is faith? What's a synonym of faith? One word synonym. Hmm? Belief is a good one. There's one even better, though. Trust. 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 All right? Trust not in your own understanding. But here we go. So, I'm going to make this very practical to you. Growing up as a child, when you had times in which you trusted your parents or trusted other people to, to take care of you, did you always know what it was that your parents were doing, and could you define it? And the answer is, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, okay, I have a grandchild now, now I think, right? Um, we do some, since they're in New Hampshire, we do some FaceTime with them. So, uh, Brian and, 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 and Brian, my son, and, and Raylene are the parents. So they, they uh, decide to, <coughs> FaceTime us because there was going to be a moment in which I think it could be put into that jumper thing. You know, where you put that, it's like a vest, and then, you know, you just, you know, and then you can start exercising your legs. You ever, I, I remember all three of my kids, I had one of those things, right? And what was so interesting to me is because Ivy, throughout her entire life up to this point, because she's only like four months old, um, she has no understanding of what it means to fall. None. Okay? And it, and it was very obvious. Because when she was put into that thing, she was like this. She wasn't, she wasn't in any way thinking about any idea of having to go up against gravity or anything else. She had absolutely no fear of falling, not like you and I, who would know what it means and we would all, because of our ability and knowledge, we would what, brace ourselves or use our legs or do something, do something, do something physically to make sure that we still stand erect or whatever, right? So it was very interesting to me, and I remember turning to Carson and looked at, looked at childlike what, faith. Since she's always been held, she's always been in a bed or held or what have you, and now she's in a, in a situation where she's never been in before. She has no understanding of the fact that this thing that's holding her up is what's keeping her from what? Falling. She can't define it one bit. But since she's like this in the thing, what is she doing? She is, it starts with a T. Trusting. trusting. Can she define that trust? No. Well, who is she trusting in? The jumping thing and ultimately her mother and her father, right? So what's the relationship between Eileen and her mother and father? Well, there is a relationship that's starting to develop. The relationship already started with mom because that right, that she's been in her womb for nine months, right? So there's this thing going on here. Do you know that uh, they've done studies on twins in the, in the womb and that twins in the womb actually relate with each other when they're with each other? They don't know what's going on but they actually begin a relationship in the womb. And they embrace each other, they reject each other, depending on 
So things are actually happening there. They've done studies on that, but they can't what? They can't define what's going on. I would suggest that everything you do in regards to your trust in God, how much of it do you actually understand? How much of it? Some of it you do. Because you are old enough, and you're older than an idly, and you understand. And that's why you're here, by the way, studying God's Word. But let me ask you this. If your faith is dependent on your understanding of God's Word, if that is the catalyst, what is your confidence in being saved at all? Zero. Do you really understand all of this? Do you understand God's providence? Do you understand it a little, but do you really understand the cross of Christ to the extent that God does? And the answer is no. When you were two or five or ten, and maybe you saying, Jesus loves me, this I know, right? Did you have faith in God? Did you? Yes. Do you know as much as you know now, now that you're going through the Bible in 7th and 8th grade? No. Can you understand more and more because you do have an intellect and you study it? Is it, a, is it a good idea to do it? Yes. But faith is not synonymous with what? Intellect. It never is. When you trust somebody else to take care of you and you don't, it's all about you not knowing what? How that other person is going to do it. When you trusted your parents, you trusted them with your very life. It's very interesting that if you, being born, uh, were left alone, how long would you survive as a human when you were born if you were left alone? Not long at all. But your parents took care of you, and during that time, were you trusting your parents? And the answer is, yes, you were. Okay? So, faith is about trust. And you can trust not knowing, right? And you've done that all your life. You've done that all your life. How many of you know how a combustible engine works? Some of you probably do. Some of you, all, the only thing, you, you might start driving pretty soon, but the only thing you think of is what? You've got to put gas in the tank, and you, when you turn that thing, it's going to make the engine go. Do you know how an engine works? With the pistons, and the gas, and the spark? How many of you understand a combustible engine? Are you going to drive a car anyway? Or are you going to learn? Are you going to learn? Are you going to you're not, right? Are you going to drive a car anyway? No. Yes, you will. You'll drive, you'll drive the car, and you won't know how it works, but you trust that the engine is somebody else knows how, right? And you'll take it. See how that works? All right. So with that, you're right. You're, you're, we're going to go to uh, Luke chapter Luke chapter 18. Okay, now, this, this, and it's in Mark 2, and, and Mark says Jesus was angry. Yeah. All right, he was angry. We say this in our baptism liturgy, don't we? Yeah. So, here's what's going on. Jesus is teaching the gulf by way of parables. And there were, there were these parents who were taking little ones, and they were, and, and the, word, word, the Greek word for baby means infants up to age two. Definitely not the age of accountability, right? So they were taking infants uh, to see Jesus, so that he might touch them or bless them. When the disciples saw this, I'm on verse 15, by the way, Luke 18, verse 15. When the disciples saw these parents taking these little babies to get blessed by Jesus, they rebuked the parents. When Je but Jesus called the children to him and said, and he was indignant, he was angry. He was basically saying, you guys don't even know Christianity 101. You don't know nothing. He was very angry with his disciples. He says what? Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as what? These little babies. Now, it doesn't mean they were innocent, because we were all conceived sinful. But it means he's talking about the trust without knowing. 
the answer. They were trusting. Uh, and he says, I tell you the truth. Now, those words, I tell you the truth, is the words, Amin, Amin. When, did you ever have your mother take your head and go, listen to me, because you weren't paying attention? That's what my mom would do. Uh, she'd tape it, and she would physically take it because I was distracted. And that's what Jesus is doing to the disciples. He says, Verily, verily, I say to you, or Amin, Amin, what? Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child in your life, never enter it. So Jesus is putting this whole thing on its head. All right? So the idea that we are, uh, and, and, and those who reject infant baptism uh, believe this, that the child is kind of, they call it a dispensation. The child is uh, has a special blessing on them until they come to the age of accountability. And when they come to the age of accountability, they fall from God's grace. They have to make a decision to follow Jesus. And then once they make the decision to follow Jesus, then they get baptized as an adult. And the baptism, and this is to your point, Amanda, the baptism becomes associated with their testimony about themselves and how they accepted Jesus, which is exactly opposite of what baptism is. Baptism is an act that God does upon us. And if you please look at, go ahead and Google the word baptism and look at every single Bible verse in Scripture regarding baptism and try to show me where baptism is an act of a human being. It's nowhere. Baptism is where, what, is God, what uh, Peter says, baptism saves you. The Apostle Paul says, when you were baptized, you were baptized into Christ's death and his resurrection. Baptism is something that God does. He's the actor. He gives us the forgiveness. It's all about him doing something to us. So why in the world wouldn't you baptize an infant baby? If the baby is conceived in sin and needs <coughs> baptism, why wouldn't you do it? And the answer is, do it. By the way, in the Old Testament, what, what, how old was the male child when they were circumcised? On the eighth day. Yeah. And what did God say about the, the circumcision? You guys know what circumcision is, right? Yeah. All right. Smith Smith? Or skin of the penis. And God says, notice it's a physical thing, too. This is how God operates. Take the, the foreskin off, and in that act of circumcision, that male child just became part of Israel, part of the kingdom of God. And that child was eight days old and didn't know anything. Right? Bottom line is faith is not about my intellect. And we'll, we'll continue to talk about this, but we have to go, okay? So we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more, and we'll catch up next week. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for our time together, and as we uh, continue to move through the Catechism, I pray that you would bless us by your Holy Spirit and lead us according to your good and gracious will, that we may grow in the faith that you give us.